Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the British tier 10 heavy tank, the Chieftain. Now this is a tank that recently got buffed and the buffs they gave it were really really nice and it made the tank just so much better to play and so much nicer to go for generally. Because obviously before there was, well let's say before, there's always been since they released the Super Conqueror, there's been three choices. You've had the FE2 on 5B, the Chieftain, and the Super Conqueror. Now, the Super Conqueror was always the tank you were going to go for. Always. Because the tank was a beast. Super Conqueror, it was boring to me, to be honest. Super Conqueror is a really boring tank. But it's an absolutely fantastic tank. It just does everything so well. And then you have the Chieftain, which was always a lot of fun to get. And it was just... It's, it's, it's iconic, right? It's always great to have. It's got a bit better mobility. It's got this incredible gun. And it was a god haul down. But the thing is, it wasn't as good as a Super Conqueror haul down. And the Super Conqueror side scrape, unlike the Chieftain as well. Well, it's now made it with the buffs to this tank and to the FP215B to a certain extent that you have a real choice when you're looking at it first time and thinking, what, oh, what boy? You know, what tier 10 British heavy tank do I go for? It's not just go for the Super Conqueror first every single time. Now you've got a choice. The Chieftain is a beast now. I mean, it was good before, but it's now a beast. So, what did they buff on the old Chieftain? Well, they buffed the Coppola from 152mm to 230. They buffed the view range from 390 to 400. They buffed the traverse speed from 30 to 34 degrees a second. They buffed the frontal armor from 140 to 185, above the gun that is. They buffed the side skirt armor from 6 millimeters on the side to 20. They buffed the premium ammo pen from 310 to 326. The health went from 2200 to 2300. The top speed and the terrain resistances. Now these are two big buffs. 42 top speed to 46 and the terrain resistances went to 0 0.8 1 and 1.7 now when they when i saw that change i thought okay they've given the chieftain the top speed buff right but they've not buffed the engine power it's a tank that kind of struggled to hit its 42 kilometers an hour top speed unless you were truly on any kind of flat terrain and even then it kind of struggled a little bit here and there I underestimated how powerful that terrain resistance change is. You put the traction system on, and you actually hit 50 kilometers an hour pretty easily. Because you get the 10% extra track traverse, which is great, but you get 10% extra on the top speed, and 10% of 46 is 4.6. You actually gain like 4.6 kilometers an hour on your top speed, and you go up to just above 50. And you do hit 50 kilometers an hour. And it's beautiful. Honestly, the mobility on this tank now is fantastic. Add to that the crew skills that I put on it, which I actually run very similar to the... Well, actually, I run the exact same crew as I do on the FE2 on 5B now, just to make the most of the mobility. And that is I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Trap Mechanic, Situational Awareness, Steady Aim, Run and Gun, Firefighting, and Off-Road Driving. Now, I run off-road driving because that buffs your terrain resistances even more. So, I make the terrain resistances of this tank even better. Just to make the mobility of the tank even better. And it really helps it when it's pushing towards that top speed. Honestly, it's... The mobility changes... It cannot, I cannot tell you how much better it's made the tank to play. And how much nicer it's just made it just to be able to move to the positions you need to be those aggressive positions you want to move to to get hull down use this incredible gun and this incredible dpm that this tank has i love the changes they've done to this tank i've always loved this tank i love the changes they've done to it so this game that we've had on high Brom, which is one of the returning maps that we've not played for a while We've actually done quite a lot of damage so far. We're up to 7k damage, 672 assistance. I was ready to do more there on stuff like that, 705A. But unfortunately, we started getting shot from behind. I was quite surprised at that moment to get shot from behind because we had quite a bit in the town. Well, we had a couple of tanks in the town at that point. And it was kind of like, how did they get behind us without getting spotted? 
It's quite a surprise that we took those two hits from that 277. I'm fairly lucky to be alive, to be fair, because he could have quite easily got a second shot if he'd stayed exposed enough. But he didn't. But there's only four tanks left on the enemy team. There is that 277. There's two guys in the town and artillery. We know where the 277 is. We know the 277 is healthy. So I want to get into a position to be able to get some great shots into him as he tries to progress, hopefully, along the A line. The 277 does get spotted. He is full health. So we're just going to use the elevation of this little hill here to try and get some shots in. We get unfortunate there, that bounce on the 277 armor there. Nice shot into the back of him. And we're just going to keep ourselves covered with this rock and hope that he doesn't basically just snap us while he's on the move. Hope pin to get another shot into him, but unfortunately he gets behind the house, waiting for him to pop back behind the gap. We get a nice shot again in. I think we track him there and break his engine. He gets shot by the TD on the hill, and we're just going to have to move up now to try and get a shot in, because there's only two tanks left, one in the town and this guy. This guy is the last hope for getting any more damage in this game. But the artillery shuts him down and the valet in the town gets shut down. But a really, really nice game for the Chieftain. And it showed the capabilities it can have when it's hauled down and it just gets to abuse its DPM in a position like that. And we've got 8.4k damage, 963 assistance. The first class, the high caliber, 1572 base XP. That is a really nice game for the Chieftain. It's quite surprising that was only a first class. But then again... I. A lot goes into the base XP requirements like spotting my own targets and shooting tanks that are tiers that are a couple of tiers lower than me, you know, killing tanks that are two tiers higher than me or the same tier as me, really, because I'm tier 10. And in that one, actually, to be fair, we shot a lot of tier 10s, but I just think a lot of it wasn't my own spot. In a lot of the time, I was basically just chai sniping off of the top of that hill. And hey, if it works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's the way it is. You know, we, we took that position on that hill and we didn't really have to move off of it because we just had so many shots everywhere that we could just keep this beautiful gun working, keep rotating our fire, keep our eye on the map to see where the next shot was and just keep going. And this map, this game, this tank is pretty much the same as Heilbronn. And honestly, like you thought the last game was a lot of damage. Wait till you see the end of this one. We take up this position on proc, which is a position that I love to take because it's, again, it's a great position on this map to be able to get shots across the two line. Then you can get shots down the six line. You can basically get shots across everywhere, which is really nice, which is why I like to take it. And we're trying to now get some shots into this T54, which we're getting. Unfortunately, we bounced the first one, but it is what it is. We'll look for a shot on this mouse now. He gets unspotted with fire. We don't pen clearly because nothing happens. But this map, this game, sorry, is exactly the same as the last one. We take this position and we're just constantly watching for the next shot of where we can get some more damage. Unfortunately, we missed the shot on the T100LT there. It would be nice to get rid of that guy because it's a pesky light tank and we want to get rid of those pesky light tanks. Artillery takes a punt at us and does miss us because that is one thing with this position is that it is an artillery magnet. It's very easy for artillery to hit you here. You've just got to bear that in mind. If there's like two or three artillery, you've got to expect to get pummeled and this position i mean it's fairly similar to be honest anywhere on this map is if you've got two or three artillery you're gonna get pummeled now we get a nice shot into the waffle pans for to set him on firing well we nearly killed him and now we're just popping up on this ridge line to get shots into this 430u now i'm actually quite confident of poking up on this this ridge line because they haven't got too many tds and people have played very aggressively poked up very aggressively in the bowl and sat on top of this hill and this ridge line and they've not got shot at, so I'm, because I'm so healthy, I'm thinking, you know what, I'm just going to take the risk. I'm just going to poke up very aggressively, sit for long enough, and take the risk that I might not get, I might get shot, I might not. Now, we've managed to get a nice shot into the T-55A, we're looking for a shot into this T-100, we set him on fire, which is a result. Get rid of this pesky light tank, he's gone, and now we've got the Object 268 that's been sat at the back of their map there to just try and farm. We get one in, two in, two in blind. He gets respotted up. And unfortunately, this guy is going to be a little bit awkward for us. Because we actually bounce off his lower plate there. And this is where the way he's angling up on hills and ridge lines and things. Our APCR with its normalization is going to struggle. He ends up slapping us up there. And I thought maybe I was hauled down enough. And actually, I think I was. I think he, looking at the damage we took there at like 400, he fired HE. 
So we lost, took 400 damage there to HE. Now the E4, which is the most frustrating tank in the universe to shoot at these days, because they buff that Capola, and that Capola is just bloody impenetrable now. And it's just so frustrating because it's a tank that did not need a buff. And having that Capola buffed its only weak spot, it's just a pain in the ass because you just can't pen it. And unfortunately, we bounced off his Capola, but we did get another shot into his side. Now that 268, again, because of the weird ways angle, APCR, shooting the wrong spot. We bounced again. We try and get the shots knocked into the T95 FE211. Unfortunately, it doesn't go in. I didn't stop to properly aim it, though, because I want to move up. We're up to 6.7k damage. There's still a lot of tanks alive. There's still a lot of health left. We're up to 7.1k damage. And I want to get myself into a position. I don't want to stick stationary and stagnant. I want to get into a position to keep this damage flowing. Because look at that. There's that VK721K. There's a mouse next to him. They're both healthy. I'm near full health. So I pop up all the way in the shot into the back of the VK7201K. And I want to keep farming this guy. That's it. I'm healthy, right? Fortunately enough for me, the artillery misses. And I know that I can just risk it for a biscuit and get some of these shots in. Fortunately enough for me, when we get a shot into the side of the VK, he fires and hits the ridgeline in front of us. I'm looking there for the shot into the E4, but he's actually got destroyed, which is why we put our focus back on the VK7201K. We load the premium to guarantee the fact that we're going to pen this guy because he is going to be an awkward customer with the way his armor is. Oh, we've only got three shots of APCR standard anyway. And um, we're just going to keep getting shots into the side of this guy's turret. Because if you have 300 plus pen and the VK turns his turret slightly to the side, same as the Panzer 7, you can pen it quite easily. Now we've got the back of this mouse to farm. And that's what we're just going to go for. He isn't bothered about us. He's just keeping himself focused on the guys in front. He wanting to get a shot at them. He's just, like I said, he's not bothered about the chieftain farming his ass. And... We're up to 9.8k damage. Can we secure 10k? Oh, not quite, but we've got the 705 in front of us. Can we get 10k? There we go. We've crossed the 10k threshold. 10,200 damage, and we're going for another shot into this 705. We're up to 10,595 damage, which is a hell of a lot of damage. We shut down the 705, and we break my damage record here. 10,701 damage. World War II record broken. Finish the game with 4 kills, 10,700 damage, 550 assistance. That is the ace tanker, the high caliber, the confederate medal. 11,200 combined. Chieftain, what a tank. My damage, personal damage record. Great game. It's a beast. The buffs have made it fantastic. Rammer, traction system, optics. Crew set, uh, equipment setup. As always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!